What the heck is happening to this moth? Find out in this episode. Welcome to Bug of the Week Part 11, brought to you by Little Dudes Insect Academy. If you're new here, consider subscribing, dropping a like as well on this video, and also go check out our playlist of all the other Bug of the Week episodes that I have on there for you guys to enjoy. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into this. This is Creatinatos gangus, sometimes known as the tentacle moth, although this isn't technically its official common name, and that's kind of why common English names are dumb. So, we're just going to call it C. Genghis for this episode. C. Genghis were first described by Carl Linnaeus in 1763 in his publication of Centuria Insectorum, which is his huge publication about insects and taxonomy that he published. Now, these moths specifically are native to Southeast Asia, parts of Australia, and all the way into Micronesia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, all those kinds of places. Sea Genghis typically have a wingspan of around 4 centimeters and have brown drab wings with a vibrant orange abdomen, which is their main distinguishing trait, and they're fairly small um, f for moths standards. Now, being a moth, they are a member of the order of Lepidopterans, which means they are born as a caterpillar. So they're related to butterflies, they are moths, um, they're born as a caterpillar, which they then metamorphosize into an adult, just like a butterfly would. Now while in the larval stage, they are actually very efficient and problematic pests, feeding on many crops such as soybeans, rice, and maize, which are all a big thing in the areas that they're from, which makes them a big problem as pests. And these caterpillars eat a lot. Most caterpillars eat a lot um, while they're caterpillars. It's basically most of the nutrients that a uh, butterfly or moth will get is during their caterpillar phase. And interestingly enough, like many other moths, the adults actually only live a few weeks because they do not have a mouth. So they get all of their nutrients as a caterpillar. So they need to eat a lot, a lot. And so that's why they're a big pest problem. Now, while they are adults, much like many other animals, they have one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to reproduce, and that is where these guys get interesting. Now, this is the adult male sea Genghis, who is always looking for a mate, and although you may think these flashy colors are sufficient for that, this guy has another trick up his sleeve. In order to attract a mate, um, the male not only uses his appearance, but he also uses pheromones. I've briefly covered pheromones in the past, but essentially they are the airborne chemical which animals use to communicate, locate food, and attract mates in this case. Ants do it. I think I covered it in the um, leaf weaver ant, in the weaver ant episode, or the green the Asian green ant episode. Um, that was That's in the playlist. If you want to learn a little bit more about pheromones, I'll talk about it a little bit there. Um, but yeah, pheromones are super interesting. It's essentially what animals use to communicate without making sounds. So non-verbally, it's through chemicals and smells. So the male C. Genghis extends feather-like plumes from the end of his abdomen, oftentimes being twice the length of his abdomen, which means they were all tucked up in there and somehow extend to be longer than it, which is just bizarre to me. These plumes then spread a hydroxydenidal pheromone, making them irresistible to female moths. Sometimes these moths release up to 400 micrograms of this pheromone at a time. Now, like I mentioned previously, the adults do not have a mouth, so all of their nutrients are taken in as a caterpillar. And another interesting thing is that the size of the plumes are actually completely dependent on the diet of the caterpillar when it was in his larval stage. The main contributing factor of this is the amount of pyrolozidine alkaloids in their diet, which they get from the crops that they eat, such as rice and soybeans. So with that, if you ever see this alien looking moth, don't fear, he's just looking for some love. So if you enjoyed this episode, please consider dropping a like and subscribing so you don't miss any more Bug of the Week episodes. Um, yeah, this is a super bizarre one. Not a lot of people really know about it. It went viral a, a few years back, but um, it went viral online. Everyone was freaking out about it. Um, but they're super cool moths, super unique. I don't know of any other um, insects that really do this the same way that they do. Anyway, really cool. I hope you all enjoyed this episode and that you learned something. 
And with that, I will see you next week and keep on bugging.